So the UiPath Advanced Certification is one of the most, if not the single most important RPA certification out there. It will help you gain credibility and it's actually required in a lot of jobs as an RPA developer. So having the certification is gonna help you a lot in your career. This is why today we are going to talk about how we can get the certification and we are going to cover everything that you need to know in order for you to pass the certification. So we're gonna start by comparing the certification to the diplomas that we have in UiPath Academy. Then we are going to see the topics that we need to understand in order to pass certification. After that, I will show you my own scores that I had and how important to focus on some topics more than others because that will help you tremendously get into that 70% mark that will help you pass the certification easily. So without further ado, let's jump to my screen. So before jumping to the academy, that's uipad.com, I wanted to show you that I already created a file full of practice questions, and we are going to go through all of these questions, and we are going to answer every single one of them. So all of these are going to be videos that we are going to make in the future. So just make sure that you subscribe and you activate the notification bell. So every time I launch a new video, you will receive it and you basically see the answers to all of these questions with, of course, the explanation that goes with it. So uh, that's first, make sure you subscribe. And the second thing that we are going to do is go back to the Academy. And here, uh, what I want to show you is the diplomas and how we can download them. So here in the Academy, if you're not, uh, if you're not uh, signed up already, just go to academy.uipad.com. You're going to find the link in the description below. And here, go to login or sign up. And you basically can use your Gmail or Outlook or any other email provider to sign up to uh, the Academy. Once you're here, you can go to courses. And uh, all of these courses, once you finish them, they give you a diploma. So for example, if I go to my dashboard and I only choose the completed uh, courses that I have. If I go, for example, to AI computer vision, here I will find that I have completed this, uh, this training and I can basically download the diploma. So once you finish it, it just gives you this, uh, this download diploma. And if I download it, the diploma will look something like this and it will basically show you the, uh, your, your name and the date of issue. So uh, this is actually free and you don't have to pay anything for it. So you uh, can have the, uh, the, the quiz at the end as much as you want. You can basically retry it infinitely and you can have the diploma, but it's not the certification. Just because they could look the same, it doesn't mean that they are the same. So diploma is not the thing that is required by recruiters, generally speaking. They need certification which looks something like this. So this is the certification and it doesn't expire. That's the first thing because before UiPath had, a, had another certification in the past that was expiring in a year. This one, it doesn't expire and it's basically uh, from uh, Pearson View, which is a website that we will see after that. So that's the difference between the certification and the diplomas. Diplomas, you can find them in the Academy. There are so much, so many, so many diplomas. The certifications, there are only three certifications in UiPath and these ones do you have to actually pay on every attempt to uh, go through the exam and actually get the certification. So that's the first thing. The second thing that we are going to do is actually go to the website of the certification. So you just need to, uh, to Google uh, UiPath certification or go to this website, uipad.com learning certification. And here you can click on schedule exams today. Let me delete all of these. And here you can uh, basically see all of the UiPath certifications. So the first one is the associate. The second one is the advanced. And the third one is the automation business analyst. So UIRPA, UIARD, and UIABI. So uh, yeah, I think the most valuable amongst them is the UiPath advanced RPA certification because this is the one that actually proved that you have the most experience in terms of developments. The UI Business Analyst has just been introduced 
And the UI uh, RPA associate, it's something that is, I would not say inferior, but it's something that you do if you're just starting in RPA. So if you're shooting for the advanced RPA developer, you're definitely going to have the RPA associate. Not sure about the business analyst, but the advanced RPA developer, it's the most appreciated across uh, developers, uh, employers, everyone. So everyone is actually looking at this certification more than any other certification. Okay, so that being said, let's go to the exam uh, description to see the topics that we have in order to get through the certification. So uh, here they uh, actually see the audience. Uh, so you have to uh, basically have an experience with UiPath. You have to work uh, on a couple of UiPath projects using the, the robotic enterprise framework and other things. And all of these things, we are going to see them uh, after that. But generally speaking, you have to have six months at least of experience as an RPA developer. You have uh, at least some formal training in a way. It doesn't really have to be formal through the academy. If you have already experience and you have developed enough uh, robotic process automation processes in UiPath, then you are good to go. And you have to be technically professional and possess the knowledge skills to basically work independently that's basically means that you can develop processes without relying on other people on your team so uh, the topics let's go to the topics which is the most important thing so uh, we have the UiPath studio that's an absolute must and it is the first thing that you have to basically know is how to develop your processes in UiPath studio so uh, so basically excel you have to know the flow charts versus sequence and other things. After that, we have activities and properties. You have to master, of course, the activities that are most used. So Excel, email, you know, PDF, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you have to have uh, enough knowledge in the properties that are most used. Like, for example, the wait for ready, the uh, delay before, the uh, the type of inputs, the input methods like uh, like simulate, click, etc. So you have to know these things. Then we go to, of course, the Robotic Enterprise Framework, the biggest chunk of the exam. You absolutely have to have experience with Robotic Enterprise Framework. That's basically the difference between a junior developer and I'm not going to say a senior developer, but I'm going to say a professional developer. You absolutely have to go through Robotic Enterprise Framework. Otherwise, you can't work on production level projects. So this is why a lot of questions, actually, I think 50% or more questions are around robotic enterprise frameworks here. It's an absolute must. So uh, then we are going to talk about selectors, of course, uh, a classic. Then we have .NET and objects. Uh, that's basically regex and uh, data structures and data types, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we have the advanced functions, which means uh, it, how to deploy your robots, how you can uh, you can uh, version control it, and then you have like the workflow analyzer and you know, how to respect uh, rules in terms of naming your variables, naming your sequences, naming your activities, etc., etc. So, uh, so yeah. And after that, we have the error handling, try catches, and etc., etc. And of course, we have the advanced orchestrator functions, the orchestrator, which is incredibly, incredibly important as well. So, so yeah, these are the topics. Uh, UiPath Studio, selectors, advanced functions, robotic process automation, uh, robotic, sorry, the robotic enterprise framework, and of course, orchestrator. So UiPath Studio, robotic enterprise framework, orchestrator. The trio, this is what we call core UiPath, and you absolutely have to know it if you want to get the certification. After that, they will give you recommendations on what to study and what to go through in order for you to get to the exam. But as we said, we are going to do everything. So we're going to go question by question and we are going to answer them and we are going to basically pinpoint where that question uh, lands in these topics so you don't have to worry about that okay uh, of course we have to talk about the details so the exam fee is 200 plus taxes so for me well i think it was 240 dollars or 240 euros i don't remember exactly but uh, you have to pay down every attempt it's 120 minutes and the passing score is 70%. So you have to have at least, you have to have at least 70% uh, 
in order for you to pass the exam. And of course, there is someone that's going to be watching you through their screen if you're going to do it uh, online. That's what I did. And we're going to get to that later on. But if you go to a center that's different, uh, there's no one that, that's going to be watching you. So you're going to have like a, a little room where you're going to pass the exam. But uh, generally speaking, if you're going to do it online, you have to actually film everything around your her, your room and uh, and basically stay on the screen, look at the screen, and you have to respect a lot of rules that we're going to talk about at the end of this video. Okay, so that's, uh, that's basically for the uh, details. Let's go to the last part where I'm going to show you my scores. Okay, so now let's go to my scores. So I have cleared uh, the certification on the first attempt and my general score was 90, but this is not important since the more important uh, stats are actually the individual scores because that tells you a better story on what you should prepare for the exam. So let's start by UiPath Studio. And UiPath Studio actually was the part where I was most confident because uh, I passed this in March 2022 but uh, my UiPath MVP application was, I think, in November 2021, the second application. So I was really confident in the UiPath Studio since I have prepared a little bit for the, uh, for the interview with the UiPath MVP. So I had work on my full-time job, so I didn't really have the time to go through UiPath Studio because it's the biggest part. It's basically, uh, you know, development inside of Studio is the thing that going to take the most amount of time if you want to go through everything. So I had only 86% and I think I was overconfident in this part. So I was not actually like double checking myself, reading the question multiple times. I was just basically rolling with them and waiting for the more uh, harder questions for me in the orchestrator because I thought the orchestrator and the robotic enterprise framework were going to be the hardest part, but it actually wasn't. So let's, let's just go through all, everything. So activities and properties, they were, there was no problem. The robotic enterprise framework, I don't know where was the problem exactly. I felt like I answered very good to all of the questions, but at the end of the day, I must have missed like three or four questions uh, and only have 92%. Uh, and actually, the Robotic Enterprise Framework has the most amount of questions. So, so even if you feel like you answered the best you can to some questions, don't be surprised if you don't get 100%, like in other categories and topics, because there's still going to be some questions that maybe they're going to be tricky, and maybe some cases that you didn't see before. But uh, more than 90 is already good and I am not complaining by any means. So selectors also a part where I was really confident because I worked on selectors since the start basically of my RPA jobs uh, in, back in 2017. So I was really confident in selectors. I was not reading, I was just going through them basically. And yeah, so, uh, so yeah, selectors, I was overconfident I think and I only got 86% at the end. So for the .NET classes and objects, it's almost 90%. I think there were some questions about regular expressions and invoke code and invoke method. And I think I maybe got some questions wrong, but I'm not actually surprised by this score. I think that's a really good score for .NET classes and objects, especially if there were some dictionaries and there are some specific type of functions and methods that we use for dictionaries in order to get data out of them. So maybe I got some questions wrong, but I'm actually, I'm, I was very happy with this score. I like the selectors and the UiPath Studio. So the advanced function, there was no problem, but here we have the error handling and troubleshooting where I only got 71%. That's basically the furthest score from any other score. And what happened here is that, so when you actually go through the exam online, there's a guy that's watching you. And if you are doing anything like that is suspicious or anything that is, uh, I'm not going to say weird, but anything that is not stationary, not you looking at the screen, straight at the screen and not doing anything, he's going to talk to you. So the first problem I had was my uh, smartwatch. I didn't even think about it, but uh, he talked to me, I think, uh, on the second or third question. 
and he told me, why do you have your watch, uh, smart watch on? Uh, can you take it off, please? And I just took it off and I put it uh, somewhere. So after that, I was going through, uh, through the exams. I was really focused. But then he told me, why are you whispering? Because I was basically reading the questions to myself. And he was really firm in a way that he basically made me anxious. Like, I just didn't like the fact that someone was watching me at all times. It just made me kind of feel weird. So I just didn't like it that much. And I was going through the error handling questions. So I just lost my focus for like two or three or four questions. I don't remember. So after I finished, I actually talked to my friends and they said it was the same experience for them. The guy was really firm in his instructions. And I feel like they are trained to do so because he wasn't like, can you please just uh, be quiet or stop uh, whispering, he said, like, if you whisper again, I will stop the exam and I will kick you out. So, yeah, he wasn't really kind of uh, diplomatic about it, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, uh, when I asked my my friends after that, they were said that they had the same experience. So the fact that I wasn't ready for it was actually the problem. I lost my concentration for two or three questions. And at the end of the exam, I just wanted to finish. Honestly, I just wanted to finish it. At the end, I thought I didn't pass or something like that. So I just wanted to finish it. I was mentally drained because there were 63 questions and I just wanted to finish with it. So the online experience wasn't that pleasant for me. And I would have preferred to go, you know, to a center and actually do it. But then doing it from home was actually better. I, nothing against the guy that actually was watching me. I didn't even know who he was, but, uh, you know, just be ready for them to talk to you multiple times and don't lose concentration if they do so, even if they say that they're going to terminate the exam and stop you right there and then. So you should be ready for something like that. The last thing I want to talk about is the advanced orchestrator functions. So here I had 100%, which is something that I didn't expect, because back then I wasn't used to the new orchestrator platform because I was still working with some clients where they had environments and they have the old orchestrator. So the fact that I had to go through the questions with the new orchestrator where I'm going to see uh, the new platform, that actually made me laser focus on the question. I was reading them once, twice, and three times before answering, and I was considering every answer. So the fact that I was overconfident in the UiPath Studio and selectors made me had a less score. So don't go there being overconfident in anything. Give every question enough respect because you don't know the tricks that could that it can be hiding. So here I have 100%. I thought I'm only going to have like, I don't know, 80, 70, something like that. But then in the places where I, were, I was more confident, I had 86% and 90% or 89%. So, so yeah. And just make sure that you are laser focused on every question and do not overestimate yourself in some areas and underestimate yourself in others. Just be laser focused on everything. And this is the way to actually go through the exam. And I think the 120 minutes, it's more than enough. So, so yeah. So, so that was it for me guys, uh, for this video. In the next video, we are going to see the first question and we are going to answer it. So we're going to start with the, by UiPath Studio and we're going to go through all of them. So as I said, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up to this video if you like it. And yeah, catch you guys on the next one. Peace.